10 years old, and I held my mother's gun to my head, and I wanted to blow my brains out all over her wall. You must ask the question, why would a 10-year-old child want to die? 10 is a time to dream of being an astronaut, of being a soccer star, a football player, a preacher, a pastor, a doctor. But for me, life was so horrific, with so much vitriol and pain, I wanted to die. I'm the product of interracial immigrants. My grandmother was tall, white, and thin from Germany, and we called her French fry. My grandfather was a big, burly black man from Cuba, and we called him Hamburger. Hamburger met French fry and created a Happy Meal. And these two immigrants produced seven McNuggets with special sauce. We would joke that we would have Wiener Schnitzel with salsa for Thanksgiving. My grandfather had to hide the fact in the 1940s in America that he was married to a Caucasian woman. But one wedding anniversary, he had a flaw. He liked to drink overproof Cuban rum. And one evening, he was inebriated. And a man saw them together and said to my grandmother, why would you be a nigger lover? My grandfather, with huge arms, lost his temper and hit the man in the jaw and broke his neck. The man didn't die, but he was injured severely. He went to the worst prison, convicted of the crime, Mansfield Reformatory in Ohio, locked down 23 hours a day. It hit the newspapers that my grandmother was married to this convicted felon and she lost her job. But being a German woman, she didn't complain or whine or woe is me. She began to work odd jobs, cleaning other people's houses and toilets, taking care of their children. But as she was working, she would have fainting spells, passing out, doing her job. She went to the doctor and discovered that she had a tumor growing behind her left eye that was metastasizing to her brain. And the doctor said, we have to take out a third of your face, your eye. You will be malformed and disformed and disfigured for the rest of your life. What do you do when the American dream becomes an American nightmare? She could not work. She was sick and mutilated. My grandfather's in jail. And day by day, they lost everything that they had acquired. They lost their house, they lost their car, they lost their furniture, they lost their dignity, they lost their self-esteem, and they were living in the streets like animals. My three uncles got hooked on heroin. They belonged to a gang called the Devil's Disciple, and my entire family became atheistic. No God, no prayer, no Bible, no hope, and my mother at age 14 was called by a pimp named Larry who said to her, what is school doing for you? You are sitting on a gold mine. She said, where? He said, you're sitting on it. And we call this being turned out. And little by little, she began to sell her 14-year-old body to grown men for money to survive. It's called turning tricks. And at age 16, she got pregnant. We call it having a trick baby. Two strangers meet for a business transaction, and there's a mistake. The pimp said, you can't make any money having a baby in the oven. We have got to kill this baby. They kicked her in the stomach. They fed her alcohol. They gave her drugs. They took a hanger and stabbed the baby over and over again. But the baby would not die. The baby was born two months premature with no pancreas, a learning disability, a bladder too small, unable to function, a severe stutterer. We call it a trick baby. Nobody wants the baby. No hope, no future. Kill it was the word. That baby was me. I'm the lowest of the low. 
I come from the guttermost. I come from a hellish condition. And so when I would go to school, I couldn't talk. I stuttered so severely from the trauma. My mother had a madam who hated men. Her name was Dolores, and she was a sadist. And when she would watch me, she would take a broomstick and stick it in a place where no boy should have any object in his body. And when you are tortured like that, you learn four things. Don't talk. Don't trust. Don't feel and pretend nothing is happening. And by age 10, I had had enough. I want it to die. And in my school, they put me in a boiler room with other kids who were dysfunctional like me, where we would finger paint all day long. And yet there was a teacher, thank God for her, who had a Gideon Bible. And she came to my school and she saw kids like me as her mission field. And she would give me this Gideon Bible and read to me stories of dysfunctional characters who God used. She would say to me, Ronaldo, God uses greatly those who have been wounded very deeply. He will turn your pain into power, your wounds into wisdom. She had me read the story of Moses, who was also a stutterer. I began to understand that God did love a trick baby, even as low as I was. There was hope for me and possibility. And when a child begins to understand the love of God and the power of his word and the possibilities, it changes everything. How can a young man keep his way clean by taking heed according to your word? Your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. I began to memorize the Bible, that Gideon Bible, reading 2,000 scriptures. And when you put that kind of word in a life, something begins to happen. My stuttering went away. I stopped wetting the bed. I stood tall. I became valedictorian, became a pastor and priest until everybody in my family got saved. Why? Because somebody placed a Gideon Bible in a woman's hand that changed a life forever. Yes! I was born a trick baby, but the trick was on the devil because a 